guys and welcome back to yet another episode of Tagged. We are recording here at AFL House in Nam. I'm joined here by my co-host Ruby Slasher, aka The Walnut, <laughs> aka Brackets, or Wooby as I like to call you. Whatever you like. Also, as I just said when we were off air, when we did the sound check, you whispered into the sound check. I was like, you actually scream into the microphone like just now. So, Decibels go up exactly. about 10. <laughs> Sorry, Rowan, editing. Jesus. How we, are you going? We're very good. But we have a jam-packed episode today. We're rolling through grand final, after parties, end of season, antics and wrap-ups, some painful departures that I'm still crying about. And, of course, we are coming up to Christmas. What an episode. And just to, um, for the listeners, Listeners and the viewers that might be a bit harsh on the eyes. The backdrop has changed. We've got a Christmas <laughs> edition and I look like the human version of it in this baby <laughs> pink top. So if there's a clash, just move on, all right? It's not about you guys anyway. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rubes, but first, before we jump into anything... I made a big call out last week. You um, made a boo-boo. Pretty good, you know? <laughs> I think any publicity is good publicity at times. Now, what happened last week, We there was a um, prelim final, semi-final, and Brisbane and Geelong played. You almost – it was, it was a prelim. Yeah, it was prelim, sorry. And Brisbane, Geelong played, and I called out that Nina Morrison probably could have got a 50, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway. You were pretty passionate about it too. <laughs> highly passionate. Don't get me wrong here now. Yes, I did watch it. I just wanted to shout out apologies to everybody – that is listening, that had listened, I got it wrong, very wrong. And AFL, I am sorry. I also just wanted to shout out to Michelle on Twitter, otherwise known as X now, because she did very passionately call me out on Twitter. I am listening to the tagged at AFL Women's podcast and I'm really disappointed that Ruby Slicer. How do I get dragged into this? I just, <laughs> I was just there for moral support. I'll support you in anything, Sarah. <laughs> and Sarah Hosking decided to spread misinfo that a Brisbane player kicked the ball away after the siren when a free kick had been paid to ne- Nina Morrison. It was Webster, a cat. <laughs> Listen, Shelley, this isn't an analytical show, okay? We're not here to talk the nitty gritty, all right? We're here to talk. And that is what we did. We talked false. So deal with it. We got it wrong, but I did also come in, show the video to everyone in the room, and everyone miss watched it. So I know. I'm just thinking. I'm trying to think. Were we a bit foggy that morning? Had we had a potentially? I I, I did say to Michelle that I've got to put my glasses on. So I am sorry. Called out. We were wrong. Our bad. Yeah. I mean. It's a, it's a bad one, Sarah. I actually, I'm not. I think your job might be in jeopardy after this well, one. Well, I'm, I'm going for the cane corn style. You know, sometimes you either get people to love you or hate you. And maybe that was it. I know. And you know what? Not. We're getting tweets about the show, so yeah. it's gaining traction. Any publicity? Um, Good exactly. Publicity. No, that's all right. We we all screw up now and then. Uh, but thank you for admitting it. Yeah, you're you're a bigger person. And for everyone doing upstairs it. at AFL, we apologise too yeah. <laughs> for sp- spreading misinformation. <laughs> we're still pushing for a season two. So yeah, stay still. Tuned. Yeah, hire us again. <laughs> Um, Now, jumping in, we're backtracking again. As we mentioned last week, we um, went to the Coral Carpet for the W Awards. So much fun. So much fun. But I did speak to my teammate, Mon Conti. Now, at the time, she I think she didn't sell it or she sold herself short and didn't think she was going to win the award. But she did promise us to do a shoey if she won. That she did. Now stay tuned and listen into this because Mon Conti, you owe me a shoey. Craig Stasevich, he did a shoey. Mon Conti, tell me who is the next person in line to do a shoey? Um, who do you think? Mon Conti. Tonight. Oh, I'll do a shoey. <laughs> if you win the award tonight, no. will you do a shoey? Yeah, deal. It's not going to happen, <laughs> but deal. <laughs> Caught red-handed. Mon Conti, <laughs> you owe us a shoey. But to be fair, she honestly probably didn't think she was a chance, but maybe that's because there was so much talk around Jazzy Garner going into the, into the week. So I think she actually thought, like, oh, nah, it's not going to happen. Well, too bad, Monique. <laughs> you were doing you it. You owe us a shoey. Well, Let's you actually, I'm going to change it. She needs to do it out of my shoe, not <laughs> her own. <laughs> And I'm going to bring Ruby's my sweaty shoe after yeah. the knee brace walking. That's hard oh, work. I've got, yeah, no, I'm going to bring like, I only played a game and a half this year. So maybe I'll bring my boots from last season and she can do it out of one of those. Really up the ante. Hey, we had a pretty incredible grand final to watch on Sunday, didn't we? Huge. Brizzy and North Melbourne. Devastation for North. 
incredible Brisbane, the reason that I, I think that was one of the best grand finals we've seen. Agreed. I think I love that the game was so close the whole time and just the, the hype coming up to it. It was all about, you know, Brizzy that played in six out of the eight grand finals or something like that. And then North, their first ever grand final. Can they do it? They've got that momentum. Lead changes throughout. Big talking point for me was Jenna Bruton, oh, obviously going down in the first couple of minutes devastated. of the game. Devastated. And that's huge for North. Like, she is a game changer. Again, one of the, like, underrated players in the league yeah. that just doesn't get a heap of attention but is so critical to North's midfield and how they play their game. Well, yeah, exactly. Her going down then made Mia King and mm. Ashford L almost adjust their roles a little yep. bit. She's almost – Jenna's kind of that – defensive cover of the stoppage sits on the defensive side and is allows those other mids to just go to work mm. um and you could see just, i guess me king and that having to you know get a little bit more defensive and not be able to bring their natural game so it'd be interesting to see how it pl would play out if you got jenna yeah. but we saw it in the men's as well nathan murphy yeah. going down in the first quarter with concussion but you look um, at the the rules with the women's game obviously we don't have emergencies so you can't then substitute someone into the game so no. north and then down for the entire game down a rotation and you and know the difference that legs makes. in yeah. the last quarter like they got ran over in the last quarter four unanswered goals yeah so you go have they were they knackered one down on the bench yeah we've got longer quarters end Crazy. of the season they've played the game of their lives against crows the yeah. week before to win by one point like i think everyone's sitting there like and you got to say, everyone was sitting there. We said it last week, just hoping a little bit for North. Obviously, change it up. Brizzy's so well respected across yeah. the competition, but for North to potentially be able to get their first grand final would have been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And to do it in front of a sold out icon, yep. 13,000 there. We called Gee, it out. We, we did. It out. I think they we got there because everyone <laughs> listened to it. I think you're welcome, <laughs> AFL, for yeah. us selling that out. And G Flip yeah. was incredible with some special guests. Sabrina yeah. Frederick Traub and Jesse Wardlaw, probably the two coolest cats in the AFLW, if we're honest. And if they weren't before, they are now. Because did you see the Sunnies they were rocking yes. on stage? The Sunnies on, playing the drums. Don't reckon the drums were connected. I'm going to be honest. I saw <laughs> Jesse was pretty on beat for majority and Jesse's singing along. Sabs, you're a little offbeat, mate. I hate to say it. I'm just going to put it out there. You're my teammate. I can say it. There's a few times said. where I went, Sabs, doesn't know what she's doing. But, <laughs> hey, overall, a, a really great success, I think. Did they uh, – did you speak to Sabs beforehand? Had she – had no. they been practising for the week? Of, was I have no idea. For everyone? I'm, actually, I'm actually seeing Sabs today, so I will be yeah. – Please ask. It's really cool. If you haven't seen it, jump on AFL. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's everywhere. It's on Instagram, Twitter, everything. So yeah. No, all seriousness, really cool they did an incredible job. They were really cool. But we have another thing to discuss, which is – I called out G Flip last mm -hmm. week on the episode to host the grand final after party. Yes. It got legs. Big call. It was. <laughs> it was a big call and we're having a laugh. Yes. It they really got legs. Yes, exactly. So AFLW posted it. They posted the clip. G Flip saw it. G messages me. Hey, Rubes, what are the chances AFLW teams actually want to... Players, uh, staff, yes, players, everyone. staff, so the it lot. wasn't just... 100%. They said, I've got... A club, a DJ and drag queens on standby. You just let me know and we'll get it going. So for this is for Sunday night. Yeah. And so I call you and I'm like, holy, <laughs> this is about to happen, right? So we're, me and Sarah turn into party organisers. We're messaging. We don't even know. We're Gab not even Pound close. from Carlton. I'm like, come on, you've got I know yeah, your I'm social committee. Kate Hall. Yeah. I'm like messaging Kate Hall. I'm like, oh, just everyone. We messaged almost every team. And unfortunately, there, I think there was about three teams that had their end of season mm -hmm. ups, um, obviously a few teams interstate, and then we're probably only going to be able to get sort of 10 or so yeah. from the other teams that were available. So we thought, gee, we don't want you to put Shout out to G though for oh. going to that effort. Yeah. And being ready to host the grand final after party. Yeah. And maybe we might have call out earlier. W? Be better. You know, exactly. Be better. Be better players. Yeah. A free <laughs> up. Are you kidding me? <laughs> With drag queens. Yes. <laughs> A club like, no, but G Flip, unbelievable that they were about yeah. to put it on. Um, and we're sorry we couldn't pull it together. Yeah. But not for a lack of G's effort. Our fault. <laughs> 
So the grand final being played does mean the season for 2023 has come to an end. It's been a pretty incredible season um, and what a finish. But I want to know, says, what was your biggest takeaway from this season? I think that the competition is starting to even out. So obviously the, the last few years we've seen a big gap between your, your top teams and the powerhouses and then the teams that have just come in as, an, uh, as, as new additions to the competition. So this year we saw Sydney playing their first final. I think that that gap is really closing. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I reckon that's mine as well is that you've got teams like Gold Coast, Swans all making finals, but not just that, but you've got teams also beating the premiers mm. that didn't even make the eight. So like the three games Brizzy lost were to three sides that didn't make we're the in. eight. And I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, so that is really cool yeah. because it means that teams are now touchable. There's yeah. no there's no untouchable sides. Um, and I think I am expecting a lot of movement this yeah. off season. Well, I think that's a good point is that like it just encourages more movement. And, yeah. and I think AFL's obviously done a great job in encouraging that that in the first place you look at Sydney and who they've drafted getting Chloe Malloy Lucy McAvoy and the difference that that's made for their team I think it just encourages mm. other players to move a little bit more as that gap closes yeah I think it's gonna be a really interesting trade period I yeah. think we're gonna see some unexpected trades any from no I, I think only <laughs> I hear maybe there might be a few D's yeah. on the move um yeah. which is interesting because we know there was a lot of they stuck fat after yeah. their premiership. So who knows? It needs to happen. Yeah. I, I think like if we can get to the teams that haven't quite been able to make that jump yet, those sort of lower five, six, mm -hmm. where the competition's going to be in a really good place. Yeah. So it's really exciting to think about. Couldn't what agree. about, I mean, we probably have a similar <laughs> thought on this, but if we could change one thing about the league... What would it be? Oh, but probably the Count games. Countdown on three. Yeah, yeah three, three, two, two one. one. More games. Yes, exactly. More <laughs> games. Um, yeah. yeah it, I think, to be fair, the two best sides played in the grand final. Yeah. So it's not like um, previous years where you've gone, oh, like it's kind of. Oh, someone missed out and they really yeah, missed out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think we got the two best teams. I think we got the best grand final we could have gotten. Yeah. Um, like incredible moments, marks, goals, all of that. Yeah. Um, and really challenged each other. But I, I would love to see us play everyone once. Agreed. I think, at, yeah, at some stage it'll get to that. And I think, as we've spoken about before, AFL's encouraged as well, is that we've got to hit some targets, whether it's audiences, a mix of everything. It just encourages everyone to either turn up to games, be better as players encourages us to obviously train mm. for longer periods in that structured environment rather than just disappearing for sort of six months and then coming back. So I think we're definitely moving in the right direction and let's just keep pumping people to come down and come on up. Yeah, absolutely. And what about you? What's a, do you have like a personal goal for next year? Uh, or the off season? Yeah, even? I definitely do. I think obviously having this hamstring tendon um, issue for the last 12 months or so, it's kind of carried around for two seasons now I've got it fixed for me it's probably consistency so just hoping that I can get that right um with any luck timeline wise I come into pre-season and and I'm good to go so hopefully it's just to pull together a good consistent pre-season and season yeah for me yourself yeah. I'll probably just play games yeah. uh, <laughs> probably just like just like get out field. of it yeah like not be injured for once that'd be awesome <laughs> not um, get carried off no, like, at least you leveled off you didn't get a stretch up no no that's yeah. it I was um yeah I was so tough um <laughs> But no, yeah, literally probably just like saying get out there. consistently play games. Yeah. Do not get injured. Yeah. I think, I think I've had all my injuries. Yeah. Like they You've get them all out chair. of the way for one year and then clean run at it for the rest. Yeah. In some devastating news, mm -hmm. your twin Jess Hosking. Yeah. Delisted from the Tykes. Yes. How is she for starters? And also how do you feel about this? Because it, it, it's pretty shattering for yep. your, your best mate and your sister to depart the club. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we grew up in the womb together. We're roommates, everything. So it's like, <laughs> roommates? <laughs> roommates. <laughs> I had to do it. <laughs> no, it's honestly, I'm shattered. I'm shattered for Jess. I think she is as well. Naturally, as sisters, you want to play together, I think, for Richmond as well. Like, there's obviously no bad blood there. And I think it's just an opportunity for Jess now. She's still got a 
shitload of footy ahead of her yeah, and she's hell. really excited to obviously see whatever that next chapter is and pump her tyres up. She was obviously in here a couple of weeks ago, but um, she's definitely still out there and keen to um, jump on another list. Well, she's an inaugural AFLW player. Yeah. Hasn't missed too much footy. Yeah. She's got experience at all different clubs. She sees how other clubs operate and has seen how the game grows. She absolutely can be an extremely important part of another team's list that are, if not a top team yeah. in that growth phase and that oh, she can help that growth and be a really key player because what she brings, that physical, what you both bring is that <laughs> physical presence you just like to be. Yes, you're so annoying. The stuff but that you can't teach. Yeah, no, that's it. It's like the tough nut stuff, yeah. the hitting people. Yeah. Just, you need that. Yeah. And you well, need her, one of her biggest strengths, again, you go on field, but off field, it's like connection. So yeah. I look at, you know, and this is me then still pumping up her own tyres, but I look at what she could do to help connect a young team or, you know, one of the establishing teams or yeah. whoever it is. I, like, I just know that she's got so much more to offer and, mm. you know, it excites me in in a little way. We obviously had one season apart. I was when... just going to say that. You guys actually played yeah, one season apart. She was a Blues, you were at Tigers. Yeah. And the lead up to the game, the Hosking Cup, <laughs> was a pretty Hosking interesting Cup. one. Tell me about it. We might have to get another Hosking Cup going. Yeah, no, I think it's just a little bit of animosity brew and maybe some angst around the game and who's going to win and who's going to get on top. It wasn't about the team and who's going to get on top. It was who's going to get on top of each other. Yeah. So um, we did, just played a massive prank war for a, at least a solid week or two. And One of you dyed each other blue. What Jess happened? dyed my hair purple. Yes, yep. that so was she it. got me, yeah, very good. It popped up on my timeline across the weekend for little birthday posts, had the big purple hair. I obviously, you know, natural blonde me. <laughs> so yeah, don't look shampoo. at the regrowth. Jess anyone. is like, she comes home and she goes, "Oh my god, Seth, like your hair's so dirty. You got like, it, it looks disgusting." So I was like, gaslit "Oh my god, you. oh my gaslit god, you. yes, you manipulator, so you're I've, a genius." I've jumped in the shower and washed my hair with purple shampoo, and she's put some purple hair dye in it. I've come out and she literally, she sold it so well that like I'm an idiot for not picking up that she was doing it. But I left it in for like an extra five minutes. And it, yeah, anyway, she, she got me good. Hey, well, speaking of assholes, <laughs> I put deep heat on her toilet paper. <laughs> Those... <laughs> oh no. And so she's sitting on her bed. So the tiger balm incident for you was karma. It was definitely karma. For I deep put, heat on the toilet paper. Well, it was paper. deep heat, but I put rapid gel. Now, if you haven't used rapid gel, it, it strictly says on the carton, strictly used for dogs and animals and horses. So, <laughs> But it's known that you'd use it for like, you know, you're allowed to for your muscles. It helps. Yeah. It's extra strength. What about your muscles? <laughs> well, they... You just sat on her bed with some ice and a towel. That is honestly... I couldn't even oh, fathom that, yeah. that sensation. I don't want to either. Oh, no. I had Tiger Balm and that, that was enough. Yeah. But off topic there, so should Jess get picked up by another club? <laughs> shout out. I reckon oh, I'm still there. She's got a heap of footy to play. Yeah. And I also think we can bring that bring back the prank wars. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to see it. So you hopefully she to. gets picked up <laughs> um, to all the teams out there listening. You need yeah. a big, strong, tough midfielder. She's ready to come in and She's be a boy. She's ready to go in, 100%. <laughs> oh, now, talking of players leaving, we're about to get some players coming into the club. The draft is coming up on the 18th of December. Now, we've had some audience questions come through. Um, again, we're finally getting around to them. But one of them is, what piece of advice would you give to girls going into this year's draft? I love that question. Mm. Um, I think I... Got, come from a bit of a like different angle from like a personal angle where I was 18 years old, <laughs> the inaugural draft yeah. and opted to move away from home. So it was like up to me to either stay, nominate WA and stay yeah. and play for Frio, which was one option or take a chance on Collingwood and, and head across and doing that. It, it was bloody tough like as in those first couple mm. of years but it's completely changed my life yeah. you know what I mean yeah. like I wouldn't had I have stayed and played for Frio I now wouldn't be doing the things and working in the space that I'm now working in and so I think I think of it as like a not just a footy thing but a broader life thing yeah. is if there's opportunity for you obviously you may be talking to clubs you may you know who knows I I will always tell someone young to go give somewhere else a crack, especially yeah. at that young age, 
move away from home because the best thing my mum and dad told me was Ruby go like it would have been easy for them to go oh just stay live at home play for Frio we'll get to watch you every weekend blah 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 and but they were like move away from home they were sick of you they were (laughs) they were sick of my bed sheets not being washed every two months they were like get out of here um but yeah no they were like if it doesn't work out yeah home's always here yeah you come home you to your comfort place and you try again and you try get picked up elsewhere yeah so and that, like that, just that decision, split moment decision, was just completely changed my life. Your life. So yeah. I think taking a chance on elsewhere, even if it's a really uncomfortable, like decision, yeah. Um, give it a crack because you can stay in your comfort zone, go back to your comfort zone whenever you need to. You're never tied into anything. Yeah. Um, and I think particularly where we're at AFLW, if you give it a crack and then you go, all right, this is a young kid who's moved away from home and she's mm. really struggling, no one's ever going to hold it against you for going back home. You know? Absolutely not. No, um, I think that's always, the option's yeah. always And if they there. do, they're worse. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I'd, I sit there from like a couple different angles. That is like so key for me. It's like you don't know how long you're going to be in this system for. Mm. For those that do get drafted, it's like, take the most of your opportunities. I wouldn't be standing here, like to be completely honest, I reckon I was going to be a school teacher straight out because mm. I had no idea what to do. Soon as footy came about, I was drafted at 20, 21, I think it was, and then still tossing up what I wanted to do work-wise. And at this stage we're only a five month season but right now I just look at the opportunities that footy's been able to provide me and I play the game that I love I get to play with a group of people that I love but all the opportunities that have come from that and then I sit there and watch some of the girls that go to draft day and don't get picked up Mm. anyone that's there I'm like enjoy it with your families that is the best part about it is this it's such a special day that potentially can change your life but if you don't get picked up don't be discouraged because I think there's always an opportunity and there's always a way in and especially for those girls that are willing to put in the work and the dedication I look at a Courtney Jones who's on Richmond's list now now she's played for three different teams she Carlton Gold Coast and Richmond now but she I remember her coming down to Carlton as a 14, 15 year old as a train on, outstanding player, elite skills, was arguably up there as like your top five of her year level or her category. She was invited to draft day and didn't get picked up, was one of the only ones in the room that didn't. And normally that's about 50 people, 25 to 50 people. Yeah. She then worked her off, managed to get herself on a list in the following years. And then I see her now, she hasn't had it easy, hardly played a game at Carlton, went up to Gold Coast, was one of their key forwards and now is found herself at Richmond. So I just think no matter what the outcome is for you on draft day, whether you do get picked up or not, just work your ass off and give it a go. Give everything a go. Yeah, bloody oath. Well, good luck to all the girls that are going in for it as well. And yeah, exactly like Sarah said, if it's if that's not the night, it's not to say that that journey's over by any means. There's a yeah. lot of different ways and pathways into the league and um, the game's ever changing as well. So I guess it's that thing of how can you, how hard can you work? Are you ha- working harder than the next person and can you evolve with the game as well? <laughs> I sit there and I'm like, God, these young kids are coming oh. through. I'm waiting for the, literally, it's a matter of weeks before these kids take your spot. Oh, no, they are fact. phenomenal. Like, yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, I think the next few draft years are exciting and yep. scary for us. Yeah, it's very. <laughs> hey, you're, still, you're still 25 and young. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's, we've got this beautiful Christmas background yep. behind us. We are in the lead up to Christmas. And I think in honour of Christmas, are you a Christmas person? Yeah, I'm all for Christmas. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely love it. I feel like you're a Christmas person. <laughs> I feel like you and Jess would set up your little stockings. Yes, matching outfits. We matching jammies. Like Christmas jammies. Yeah, yeah. definitely. What about Chris Kringle? Are you a Chris Kringle fan? Yep, love yep, it. Yep. Absolutely Any, love it. Anything where it. you're receiving presents. I'm really. not I'm not organised. So if someone else organises Chris Kringle, I'm there for it. Well, lucky you have me. <laughs> because. What's this cute little basket I you got going on? We should do Chris Kringle this year. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to have to pull out the names out of the hat. Who are you going to get? <laughs> pull out and we're going to oh have 20 bucks. There's so many in here. I know. Now I'll pull Are one we out. Doing it at the same time. Yep. Let's open up. Who have we got? <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I got myself. So I'm gonna, I, I, it was a twenty dollar thing, but maybe let's make it way more. Yeah. Um, no, we're gonna <laughs> right, the budget. We're gonna get each other a prezi. We've got twenty dollars. 
okay. limit to spend. Okay. And we're going to give them to each other. I'm glad you put a limit because I was going to give you 100 bucks or something. I'm that kind of person that I am so late with my presents. I'm that so unorganised like, that I write a like, voucher. Yeah. Something I can get very, very quickly, last minute. Forgot something online. Just give me a beautiful Range Rover that you drive in every <laughs> morning. How about that? I'll, I'll give you my give you car that's aircon's <laughs> broken and bloody barely makes it. The here. old Chevy is it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Right, let's get into our tag list. What yes. are you tagging this week? Okay, this week it is something that I use every day. I've got two things, so mm-hmm. I always go rogue. It is Maybelline Colossal Mascara. It's the yellow one. You walk into Chemist Warehouse, you go and get it. I use it every day. The days that I do not use it, and this has happened to me multiple times this week, people will go, Sarah, oh my God, are you okay? Are you sick at the moment? Now I've got, like I said, natural blonde hair. (laughs) All natural. (laughs) My eyelashes are quite, they're a little bit fair. They're light. Yeah. Yeah, so if I'm not wearing black mascara, I do look like they've kind of disappeared. That is number one. Number two, at the moment, my regrowth shocking. You can't really tell right now, obviously for listeners, so you're very welcome. <laughs> but for viewers, I have smashed my hair with, but I don't know how to pronounce it, Batiste, um, what do you call it? Dry, dry shampoo. shampoo. Elite. Every day, lifesaver, two products I'll use all the time. Okay, nice. You? I'm actually just going to give G Flip a tag. I think... <laughs> Also. They've had a big few weeks um, and I think anyone that watched the grand final show now understands why they got the ARIA for best live performer. Yeah. I think they like they ca- came from the ARIAs with two ARIAs and that was one of them. And their show, I've actually seen them live before, a few years ago, before, well, a couple years ago, a bunch of us mm. Pies girls went. She actually yelled out, go Pies, on the stage with <laughs> song. Mad. And anyone that's seen, have you seen the go Pies tattoo on yes, her arm? Yeah. Yes. Full, full <laughs> Pies nuffy. Um, but no, they are a ripper human. They, the way they were willing to throw, throw an after party. Uh, throw an after party. They pulled through that many times for an after party. But also, how talented are they? They played. Yeah. Three or four instruments in just that four <laughs> songs pre-show. Their voice is incredible, um, and their album is unreal. Drummer. If any drum, drummer, if anyone hasn't gone and listened and streamed drummer, it's a go late. now. But I just think they're I doing struggle. incredible things. I struggle to coordinate my upper body and lower body, let I alone know. sing, drum, and do everything oh, at the same time. Seriously, like on the guitar, then go on the piano. Yep. Uh, insane. So I just reckon they're having a incredible month yeah and it's only up from here too great shout out yeah um right well that's all from us for this week anyway i expect a really nice present next week for anyone that um wants to give some gift ideas uh i don't know whether we're going rogue or whether we're doing some nice gifts whatever you want to do we don't have to set parameters yeah do we go funniest gift wins and extra maybe. chris kringle yeah mate maybe so um hit us up i reckon dm Rubes and I, and make sure you give us a few ideas, yeah. present ideas. I yeah, reckon. I think so. $20 Unless budget. you're Shelly that abused us on Twitter. <laughs> Michelle. 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 Shelley. We don't want to hear from you anymore, Shelly. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but we're also we're sorry for getting that wrong. Okay. And we also love you for listening. Keep listening to Tag. We're totally joking. But anyway, <laughs> if you love the episode, like, subscribe. Um, make sure you subscribe on uh, Spotify and iTunes to yeah. be notified. Only a couple episodes left yep. so get into it while you can um and Give hopefully we get you yeah want to get another season email uh the afl to talk about how much you want a second season let's really push really it. push it here guys um but otherwise we'll see you next week